In any sport, it happens only once a year. That one great event that brings together the best of the best in a competition more meaningful than all the others. In golf, it's the Masters. In football, the Super Bowl. In tennis, it's Wimbledon. And in the sport of racquetball, the Ectalon Racquetball Championships. The honor roll of past champions reads like the Racquetball Hall of Fame. Yellen, Peck, Adams, Swain, and Hogan, to name just a few. They are all here once more to battle for the most prestigious title in their sport. Who will be able to call themselves national champion when all the smoke clears? Well, we'll find out today at the national finals of the Ectalon Racquetball Championships. Brought to you by Ectalon, the most recommended name in racquetball. Hi, I'm Ted Dawson. Welcome to the Sports Gallery in Anaheim, California, where ESPN is happy to be bringing you the Ectalon National Racquetball Championships for the seventh consecutive year. The greatest players in the game are here this afternoon, vying for over $40,000 in prize money and the title of national champion. Joining me on today's broadcast is the 1982 national champion and only two-time winner of this event, Dave Peck. Dave, what makes this tournament so special? Uh, first of all, it's the culmination of the season, so the rankings are important here. They're playing for the national championship as well as TV exposure. Well, you heard it from a man who ought to know. And we'll be back to bring you the men's pro finals right after this. Dave Peck, 1982 national champion. The power kill. Lynn Adams, 82 national champion. The drive, sir. With the Ectalon CBK, the ultimate high-performance racquetball racket. The stiff, lightweight graphite frame pours on power without sacrificing control. For top players everywhere, the only racket. The graphite C B K From Ectalon, the most recommended name in racquetball. Ted Dawson and Dave Peck back at the national finals of the Ectalon Racquetball Championships. The men's pro finals are up first, so let's go down to the court and meet the players. Top seeded Marty Hogan is the all time leading money winner in the history of pro racquetball. Hogan won this championship in 1981 and won five consecutive national titles between 1977 and 1981. His opponent will be 26 year old Mike Yellen, who won this tournament in 1983. That victory gave Yellen the national title in 1983, a title he successfully defended in 84 and 85. A victory here today would again move Yellen past Hogan back into the number one position in the 1986 rankings and give him his second Ectalon title. We had a chance to talk with each of these players about today's championship and the dream matchup in racquetball, Hogan versus Yellen. Is there a lot of pressure on you being the defending national champion, uh, the top gun, the guy everybody's trying to knock off? Does, does that make it tough for you? Uh, not necessarily. I think the pressure is all what you put on yourself. Um, basically, all I ask of myself is to play the best racquetball that I'm capable of playing. And as long as I do that, then I can uh, be satisfied with my performance. Uh, if that means that I lose that particular day because my opponent was red hot, then I can accept that. If I lose because I'm not on my game and not performing to the best of my ability, then I have a little bit of trouble uh, dealing with that. But in most cases, I think I'm working out properly and I'm training for the matches and preparing properly so that I'm a I am out there playing my best racquetball. And as long as I'm doing that, I think I'm pretty, uh, pretty satisfied with uh, whatever the outcome might be. Obviously, I'd like to win, but you can't always win. You can't win 100% of the time. How will you play Marty Hogan in the finals? Well, I think that uh, my style is more of a control style. My emphasis is on hitting my shot uh, in the proper area of the court. Marty's more of a power player, and uh, I'm not going to try and go out there and hit power with him because he's better at that game than I am, and he's not going to try and play control with me because I'm better at that game. So it's a question of who's on that particular day, uh, which generally we both are when we play against one another, and who just happens to be executing a little sharper than the other. And generally, like I said, it's a three-hour match in five games, and could be anyway. Sometimes it's decided by a point or two. Marty, it seems like this tournament, this particular tournament, despite the fact of all the national championships you've won, this tournament has been kind of a jinx for you. You've only been in the finals one out of the last seven years. Is there a problem here with this tournament? Do you have some problems here? I've, uh, you know, I have. I've been very successful just about everywhere else, but when I seem to come to, to Anaheim here for the Ectalon Championships, I really just uh, 
you know, something's sort of missing in my game. And I just, uh, I don't think it really has anything to do with the side of the tournament. It's just, uh, I just come in a little bit flat. But also, too, if you take a look at the players I've played over the last few years that have beat me here, they've played their career matches against me. They play real tough. And quite frankly, this tournament uh, is not an exception. I'm still in. I'm hanging in there. I'm not playing as good as I really can play. But, uh, geez, I've played against two players in the quarterfinals. i played against uh, a young guy out of Riverside who played the, the game of his career, and he almost beat me. And then yesterday I played against uh, Cliff Swain, who beat me last year, and he played an unbelievable game. But I'm winning the big points at the end, and I think that's what's holding me through. Racquetball fans want a Hogan Yellen championship final. What's that match going to be like? Uh, I would definitely be moving Mike Yellen. I would be moving him around. You can see that he likes to sit in the center of the court. He likes to be, he, he likes to set up to hit his shots. And if you move him around, if you move the bigger guys around the court a little bit and make them hit on the run, I, I think that tends to throw up their game a little bit. Uh, it's going to be exciting. We always play right down to, to the bitter end, and quite frankly, whatever it takes, I'm going to be out there to do it. And we're Nine just seven. about underway. Zero, Dave, you can explain Zero. some of the rules as we go along. It'll be Mike Yellen. You can only score on your serve as Yellen gets set to serve to Hogan. Boy, Mike's starting out strong. He hit, hit the crack serve to the forehand side there. A little short. It's got to go past the second line there, right there where you see Ectalon, just past the EKT. There's that slow shot. Mike had an opportunity there to, to win the rally. Um, Marty set him up, but he just missed his shot. Marty Hogan with his first serve. So, no point awarded here because you only score, score on your serve. serve. The score is one to nothing, yelling in favor. First man to 11 wins. Boy, the first couple rallies here, they've both been serving extremely well and uh, cranking it up. Two to nothing. What a shot. Just skipped it up. Just hit. barely skipped in. The ball is traveling so fast, it makes it a little tough to see on the serve, especially. How's that for a shot? That, uh, that's one of those kind of shots you swing at and you hope that it goes in. Either player look a little tight here early? They're both swinging freely. They don't look too tight. They, you know, they've been in this situation so many times. Skipped it up there again. So Hogan's had two serves and hasn't been able to score in any of them yet. He's, he's made several forehand errors also. There's an appeal there, Dave. Explain what happens when one of the players appeals. In racquetball, you have the option to appeal. If, you, if the linesmen agree with what the referee calls, they put their thumbs up. If they disagree, thumbs down. Referee, and, by the way, today is Larry Lee. His linesmen are Ruben Gonzalez, who's one of the great players, and Sean Fitzpatrick. There's a light hinder. Whenever it takes a funny bounce off those lights, we, we just play it over again. He's, he gets two serves right now. Nice shot on Mike. He caught Mike leaning over to the left on that particular shot. One serving three. I think Mike caught him on the backswing there, and they just played it over again. Whenever there's contact like that, you can just play it over. Touch shot. You see that? Great shot. 
Yellen has really become an outstanding player, hasn't he? These are the two greatest athletes in the sport. Absolutely. They, they're both just dynamite players. Yellen looks like he could be playing linebacker for the Detroit Lions. He's <laughs> from that area. Big, strong, great athletic talent. Three to one the score. Mike Yellen out in front. Hogan, by the way, won the last match between these two. A three-hour one. Great shot by Hogan. He came in to nail that backhand, pinched it right up into the corner. The thing about Marty is he is not afraid to go for the bottom board, that low kill shot. And he sort of lucked out on that one. The ball hit the crack and, and rolled off the crack there. Two Notice serving three. Marty is really cranking up his serve. That ball is crossing over there probably about 125 miles per hour, so Mike has to really get prepared. Sort of prepared. prepared that time. Got it on that one, huh? Now, notice Mike is going to slow down the pace here. Go up high. Nice shot. He'd slowed down the pace on that one, except he didn't quite get it deep enough, and that allowed Marty to hit an offensive shot there. Marty Hogan, one of the great champions of racquetball. One of the guys that really helped popularize the sport. He's a great athlete. The thing that's incredible about Marty is he's been playing the game for 15 or 16 years and is still as intense a competitor as there is. A little short. Short serve. With this game style of Marty's also, all those drive serves have a tendency to wear you down a little bit. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen later on in the match. Beautiful shot. Think, the thing in, about the Mike and, and Look Marty. at the racket size there. Mike Yellen is the first man ever to win a national championship playing that oversized racket. That allows you to get a little bit more power, a little bit more control. Then why wouldn't everybody use it? Everybody should use it. Well, that's definitive enough. <laughs> Especially the beginner players that have a little con uh, problems hitting the ball solid. That th that's a great racket for them. Any disadvantage to it? The only disadvantage is uh, is getting it strung. <laughs> Just because it costs so much all the string, but uh, it's a great racket as far as playing and everything goes. Marty, the last three or four drive serves, has been hitting him short. He's not pushing his hips through the ball. Where do you want the ball to land on your drive serve? Just past that red line there, past the short line. That way it doesn't come off the and back. And you want hole. your lob serve to go long. Right. right. Just in on that particular shot, Mike left it up off the back wall, and Marty just put it right in the corner. We're tied at three. Game one, best of five championship finals. He's getting a little velocity on it, though. They're still hitting a little short. See, this is where Marty does not want to get into this type of game here. This is the slow game. This is a benefit to Mike. Missed that one. Yep. Four, seven, three. Hogan takes the lead for the first time. Nice shot. Let's go to Dave Peck for his tip on the drive serve. The key on the drive serve is making sure you get a good starting position in the service zone. And when you go to contact the ball, hit up through the ball so the ball will travel up to the front wall and carry past the short line. That's your tip for the drive serve for today. Marty Hogan, who had a four-point lead here in the first game, has seen it dwindle to one with Mike Yellen trying to tie it up on this serve. See, that particular serve. Hogan says, no. No way, yes. Yeah. Well, Mike set him up on that one. He didn't get it quite deep enough, and you don't want to do that on Marty's point. It's extremely tough. Just 
Slow down the pace. He'll come down with this. Got him out of position, yeah. right? Mike got that shot, but he left it up, and Marty just stepped in and crunched it. Made a, made a nice shot. 8 6. Three points away from the first game win for Marty Hogan. Marty's first serve percentage is way down. He's, not, he's gotten only one or two in. That's one of those light hinders where if it hits off the light incorrectly or it takes a funny bounce, they just, we just play it over. Eight serving six, Hogan leading here in the first game, best of five national championship finals. Just then, Mike tried to hit that overhead and left it up off the back wall, and Marty just dusted it. Hogan now two points away. And again, he misses his first serve. You know what surprises me about that is that, that he's playing at the second serve, the soft game, and he's beating Mike at the soft game here this first game. What a shot. Game point for Marty Hogan as he leads it game 10. Point. To six. Marty is hitting the ball extremely crisp right now, also. Yeah. What a shot. As Marty Hogan wins the first game of the best of five championship, the final 11 to six. We are back at the Ectalon National Racquetball Championships, and Mike Yellen, the fellow in the gray, has his back against the wall. He has lost the first two games by the identical 11 to 6 scores. Hogan wins the first game 11 6 after coming from behind. Hogan totally controlled the second game. Actually, he was way ahead. Watch Yellen catch up, get one point ahead, and then Hogan just closed Mike Yellen out to win the second game by a score of 11 to 6. Hogan has won the first two games, but you've got to win three. stays alive stays alive again oh my goodness what a great rally the best rally of the championship final so far Hogan saving point after point after point and finally skips it in to lose the point to Mike Yellen You notice how Marty dove across the court on that last particular rally? I mean, he, he must have gone seven feet in the air to get that particular shot. What and does he, that take out of you, Dave, though? What can that, can that hurt him now? It can hurt him as far as hitting and stuff. You can get injured doing it, but the, Marty is so coordinated, he hits and he gets up so fast. But will it take something out of him from here on? I, I for Mike's sake, I hope so. Went to all that work to win that last rally on Mike's part and then just to skip it in. That's not a good thing to do. A little short on the serve is Hogan. I think Mike should start playing that forehand ceiling to, to Marty's forehand from the ceiling there. Marty has made numerous mistakes from that deep back court, more so than on the backhand side. Nice shot. You know, we've been watching Mike Yellen play with that oversized racket of his. We had a chance to talk with Mike about the evolution of rackets over the last 10 years. 
we've seen some major changes in equipment. Uh, for example, the racket I'm holding right here is uh, the Ectalon Bowmark, which uh, was the first racket that I ever played with. Uh, as you might be able to see when I pick up some of the different rackets, the handle size is much larger on this racket. The racket weight is a little heavier because the balls at that time were a lot slower playing, and uh, the heavier racket allowed you to control the ball a little better. Uh, as you get into, uh, into the Magnum, which uh, was the highest tech racket, aluminum racket at the time, uh, you can see now that the racket has a, is minus a throat piece here, which allowed for a little larger hitting surface, a little larger sweet spot on the racket. And at this time, the handles were starting to come down in size, as well as the weights of the racket. So this became uh, the, a very popular racket for Actilon, and actually the top of the line aluminum racket for its time. Uh, next, we moved into the composite rackets and some new materials. This is the composite 250G, which was the first graphite racket ever introduced. Once again, the handle sizes started coming down. The weights of the racket became real important, and this is at 250 grams, which is actually part of its name. And uh, this is the most popular graphite racket on the market today. There are more of these out there than any other graphite racket. Uh, the racket that I'm currently using was just introduced by Ectalon uh, roughly nine months ago. It was called the, the Toron, the Ectalon Graphite Toron. The difference in yeah. size there. Size-wise, it's much larger. It's actually about two inches large, uh, longer in length, and it's much wider in the width of the racket. And uh, basically, I've been playing with it for about six months now. The handles uh, have gone from wooden materials down to more or less styrofoam materials and that has helped in reduce some of the weight as well but uh, the overall playability of this particular racket is uh, I think the benefits number one would be uh, extra reach because of the two extra inches of length and number two would be just extra leverage and power because of uh, you know, just that two inch two inches extra length uh, hitting each shot I think I've, I'm able to hit the ball much harder with it. Mike Yellen, who lost the first two games 11 to 6 here at the National Racquetball Championships, leads the third game 7 to nothing. And Dave, uh, should Marty just maybe kind of kiss this game off and save his energy? I think what Marty should do is just try to groove in the stroke again and start trying to hit the, the shots. Did it again. Yeah, he's, he's, he skipped he's, another one in. And it's 8 to nothing in the third game. He's really out of sync right now. He, he needs to just try to move Mike around and get, get back and, and concentrate. He's just going out there and just swinging away. I think it's time to write it off. And he skipped more balls in this this game than I, you know, I've seen in a long time. Nine to nothing. Ten serving zero. Ted, I don't think in my whole time of playing, my whole career, I've ever seen Marty get zero. It's called the donut in racquetball. Yeah, especially in a national championship game. Will it happen here? Can Mike Yellen close him out? Yes. Mike Yellen stays alive with an 11 to nothing skunk in game three. Can Marty Hogan come back? We'll find out right after this. Dawson along with Dave Peck back for the fifth and final deciding game of the Ectalon National Racquetball Championships. It's Mike Yellen in blue having won the last two games. Marty Hogan in white having won the first two games. Hogan blitzed through the first two games winning 11-6 over Yellen but then Yellen just absolutely slaughtered Hogan winning at 11 to nothing in game three and came back for 11 to five victory in game four and now we're into the finals with Mike Yellen starting off. He'll serve against Marty Hogan, and we're underway in the fifth and final championship game of this great championship tournament. The interesting thing here is going to be whether Marty is tr really fatigued on this. He used They're a, starting over, excuse me, Dave, because it hit a light. Whether he's fatigued or not, mentally or physically here, it looked like he was real tired those last two games. Great shot there nice by shot. Marty Hogan. A reminder, we'll have the women's uh, national championship final coming up between Lynn Adams and Karen McKinney. Lynn Adams, one of the finest, the finest women's player in the history of racquetball, coming right up after the men's championship as Hogan skips his serve in and loses his serve on the first chance. That's called a non-front serve, you know, the technical aspect of that. What he did is he just wasn't concentrating. Tired? I think he's a little fatigued. 
he can't help but be fatigued with all the energy he just used on those those games. I don't want you, you know, the he thing, look tired that yeah, time. Yeah, the thing about Marty is he, he has such a desire to win that he could be just crawling and still play tough. At his best, was he the best player you ever played against? Oh, definitely. He's, he was tough. T he, he's just so talented. Has he lost anything in the last couple of years? No, I think he's gotten better. I just, just also... Just other players have gotten other better. Other players also. have gotten better. We've, we've caught up to him. When, you know, he was one of the guys that I looked up to, and I still do as far as playing goes. Hogan skipped that one in. That's why he lost his serve. Still no score in this fifth and deciding game. Mike is not making Marty move to hit his shots. He's coming down on the ball, but he's leaving the ball up, and Marty's just re-killing him. He's not forcing Marty into moving. He has to get him to move. Marty Hogan has only won five points in the last two games. When is the last time we saw him get his first serve over? I cannot remember. And hit the light again, took a funny bounce, so they just replay the, the point again. But he gets to start off this time with two serves, so he can try his power serve. And a serve. There was, that was short, clearly short. Yeah, see, the advantages of having good linesmen, it, it keeps the match from getting out of hand. So that's the third straight time Hogan has missed his first serve in this game. But he still gets the point. He, what Marty's doing here, or what it looks like he's attempting to do here, is he is going to start angling his shots and trying to get Mike to move here. Hogan took a three to nothing lead in game four only to just get blown away after that. Takes a one to nothing lead in this game. You see that, that deep forehand, he's having problems executing that shot. He's, he's skipped, I, I can't tell you how many. Skipped it again. Yep. And we're tied at one. Whenever Marty's had to move a bunch off balance to hit his shot, he skipped the ball or he's left the ball up for Mike. There it is again. Let's take this opportunity to get another playing tip from Dave Peck on the backhand. Most people are intimidated by hitting their backhand. The backhand's just like throwing a frisbee. You want to step into the ball, lead with the elbow, extend square, and follow through to the front wall. While there's a break in the action, let's us take a break. Stay with us. We're in game five of the best of five match between Marty Hogan and Mike Yellen. Good first serve by Hogan. Great return by Yellen, and all of a sudden the ball spun on it. He hit that with such velocity into that side wall. The spin coming off the front wall carried to the right just then. Now this is, this is the tricky part for Mike. He has to slow it down and keep Marty from grooving in here. Four to two, Hogan leads, and again, a short serve. And what I mean by slowing it down, just not letting Marty get in there and swing on his serve, make him think about it a little bit. Great play. Uh -huh. Beautiful shots. Yellen just missed, and Hogan takes a five to two lead as he's knocked off four straight points on Mike Yellen. Hogan winning the first two games, 11-6, 11-6. Yellen coming back to win the next two, 11-5. And now Marty Hogan takes a five to two lead here in game number five. The national championship, the number one ranking, $10,000 all on the line here 
at the Sports Gallery in Anaheim, California this afternoon. Hogan with the serve, and again it comes up short. Now he'll lob this one. It's a little like a bicycle race when those lob serves. They, they just take their chance for one, and all of a sudden they speed up. <laughs> As Mike Yellow. That was a nice shot on Mike's part. He came down on the ball and hit it cross court. He's changing the angle up on the serve here. Hopefully it'll mess up Marty. Light hinder. A lot of times what happens in the pro ranks or in any, any ranks, you get used to a certain ser serve or the, your, the person you're playing gets used to your serve and then all suddenly it's not as effective. So he's changing up the angle here just so that uh, Marty will hit a weak return. Not that time. On Mike's shot, he's hit from his backhand side there, he's hitting him down the line. He, he needs to hit a cross court, which will open up the court a little bit more. Okay, they call a hinder. We'll start over again with Marty Hogan leading 5-2 here in game five. You notice you can only win a point on your serve. Now, coming up, the women's national championship between Lynn Adams and uh, Karen McKinney. And in that game, they score every point. Dave, uh, what do you like better? I, I like where you score when you serve. I, I just think it's a lot easier to understand that. But, you know, it's a, it, it's their serve. Oh, Marty just had a great serve just then. A serve by Marty Hogan. Plus, I have problems counting that high, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> the women play to 21. The men play to 11. Good point by Marty Hogan as he takes a 7-2 lead. I tell you, he's, he's gotten a second win here. He's popping the ball. He's moving. I really think Mike should call a timeout at this point in time because uh, he seems to be a little out, out of sync right now. Mike Yellen has not called a timeout in this match. He, he needs to call one now. Marty scored about three or four points. There it is. He just called timeout. Good call, Dave Peck. And we'll be back after Mike Yellen calls timeout right after this. Mike Yellen in the court as we come back here at the Ectalon National Racquetball Championships. Marty Hogan, who has won 369 of the 418 matches he's ever played in uh, pro rankings, is uh, leading here in the fifth and final game. Hogan back on the court now. Hogan won the first two games, 11-6, 11-6. Yellen came back, won game three, 11 to nothing. Game four, 11 to five. And now Hogan, who was down in game five, it comes back uh, and they scored the last five points to lead it seven to two. And Hogan still scoring. Yellen, by the way, is the number three player on the all time list. Uh, he has won 74% of his matches. Hogan, though, has won 88% of the pro matches he's ever played. That's disgusting. Beautiful shot on his part. Marty's coming down on the ball. The, you know, the. The most important characteristic of a winner is desire. He's completely fatigued, and he's still moving and hitting his shots, and he's crunching. Eight serving two. Marty Hogan, three points away. As the uh, serve is short. I guess that desire helps on the winning percentage there. 88%. By the way, my partner Dave Peck is number four on that list. He's won 73% of his pro matches as they call a light hinder again here at the sports gallery in Anaheim, California. Ted Dawson along with Dave Peck. Glad you joined us here at the Ectalon National Racquetball Championships. We've seen some great athletes this afternoon and we're gonna see more with Lynn Adams defending her national championship against Karen McKinney coming up next. Marty just served an ace serve there. We'll see what happens. I think Mike thought it was short, we'll see. It was not an ace serve. They called uh, Yellen uh, hit him with the ball, and the referee is saying he didn't think it was going to hit the back wall. That apparently is not an appeal. 
that that's a judgment call. You're, you're absolutely correct. So he can't appeal that. And the serve is good. Mike is definitely in trouble here. Marty Hogan, two points away from winning $10,000 in the Ectalon Racquetball Championships. Look at the concentration on his face. He still has two more points to get. Boy, he blistered that serve. He's gotten seven points in a row. Make it eight. And Marty Hogan is one point away from a national championship in the number one ranking. He blistered Match that point. last serve. Match point from Marty Hogan. Can he get it here? A little short on the first serve. Isn't it incredible the difference as far as his, he's hitting it? He's popping the ball so much harder now than he did the, the last couple last of games. Last two games, right. High lob serve for his second serve just to get it in play. He's coming down. Nope. Oh. And he skipped it up. Boy, that was so close to rolling out and winning the match. Yellen stays alive. Now, Mike Yellen, who ran off 11 straight points in game three to win it 11 to nothing, ran off eight straight points in game four to win it. Can he do it again? Yeah, we'll take it over from a light hinder. Mike is going to have to play flawless ball right now. He, he, can, he cannot afford to make any mistakes. Notice he's keeping it up high, so it doesn't allow Marty to come down on it and go with the offensive shot. That's trouble. That's that Marty mistake. Marty Hogan has a chance to win it again. Match point, 10 serving, two. Match point from Marty Hogan. Hogan sets. He fires. Match point Great from match. Marty Hogan. And Marty Hogan wins the national championship over Mike Yellen. Stay tuned because we've got the women's national championship. As you take a look at national champion Marty Hogan, he is $10,000 richer. He's the number one racket player in the country, and he just won the national championship. We'll be back to see who wins the women's championship right after this. Don't go away.